Hello and welcome back to the Building a Blog series. So this is part 13. So in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at advanced search techniques to help us filter and return search results. So we have already covered search in this series twice now. First of all, we built the framework to construct and to have a basic search feature within our blog. And then we used Ajax to build a a suggestion, a search suggestion tool so that when users type into the search form, suggestions would appear. So up until now, the search has been a little bit limited. So one of the main problems is that when a user types in a single word, that, that works okay. But once you start typing in multiple words, the problem being is that it has to match those multiple words in that particular order. And that's where we start to see certain problems using the default set of tools that we've been using to create search features. So what we need is a, a more powerful set of features to allow us or to allow the user to type in words, maybe at random, maybe, maybe multiple words, maybe phrases. And for us, for our search to be able to intelligently find information based upon what they are trying to say or the words or the word combinations. So let's have a look at advanced search techniques to try and better provide better search results for the user in Django. So in the previous tutorial, we installed the Postgres SQL database. So it is important that you have this installed before you start or before you complete this tutorial. So we are going to be utilizing some of the Postgres features that's going to provide us some more advanced features to, to return better search results. So one of the main benefits of using the Postgres SQL database is that we have something called full text search. So we're going to look at three technologies here, search vector, search query, and search rank. And we're going to implement them in our existing blog application to improve the search results. So this code is from part 11 of the Building the Blog series. It's in the description. You can download it and start it. So in the previous tutorial, then we created a, a search option. So if you go into the blog and views, you'll see the, the current code we have to run that query. Now, if we just go into the web page, so if you do start up the server with the code from tutorial 11, you will find that you need to manually go to the search URL. And then if you just type something in, you should return something. There we go. Okay, so that's working okay. So previously we did have an option, a drop down option to select the category and then to search within that category. So I'm, I've gone ahead and removed that first. So if you head over to the blog forms, I've just removed the reference to C and then I've gone ahead and then in the views then just remove the C option again from the post search view. Okay, so now to migrate to Postgres SQL. So assuming that you are actually using a Postgres database now to serve your Django application, the first thing you need to do is just head over to your uh, core application your main application and just head over to the settings and at the top here in your installed apps you need to add the reference to postgres so django contrib postgres that's going to give us now the options and facilities to create more advanced search features so let's just start with the single lookup using the postgres database so obviously a common way to use full text search is to search a single term against a single column in the database. So let's go ahead and create a simple search lookup. So we're just going to remove reference to Q here. So we're going to need the Q and we don't need that anymore. So we're just going to clean the search return from the user and then we're going to query. So the changes that we're going to make here is going to be on this line here. So we go from just filter query to the filter, the title, and then utilizing the keyword search equals 
and then the queue represents what the the user has typed into the form in this case. So just to clarify that, so we return queue from the post, sorry, we return queue or data in queue from the search form. That's the data or the text that the person has typed in to the form. Then we clean the data and now the data is available. The search string is available and we use that to then search in this case against the title of the post form. So the post model. Remember that in the blog, we're using the post model. That's where we're storing all the data about our posts. So that's a, a simple search lookup utilizing Postgres SQL. So obviously we can test to see if this working, if this is working. So let's just go ahead, type in Django and there we go. So notice this time, and previously it didn't work. When we typed in Django, just the word Django, um, it didn't actually return any results because it was expecting um, us to type in the whole uh, title, I think, uh, in order to return a result. And obviously now what's happening is it's looking for Django within the title. And obviously if it finds it, it's going to return that as a result. Okay, so let's move on to search vectors. So obviously searching a single field in your database is, is maybe all that you want to do. But if you want to search against multiple fields, then we're going to use this search vector here to achieve that. So to apply the search vector, if we just uh, take the original here, the remember that the user's input is in queue. So we just say results post or objects. And this time we're using annotate. And then we say search equals search vector. And then within the search vector, we just need to define what fields we want to search against. So in this case, title and content. That's obviously fields within our database. And then we go ahead and create our filter and just finish it off with the search equals and then Q, which is obviously the user's data. So although this is not necessarily going to show, we're now searching against both the title and the content. Okay. So you'll notice that there is an error. It says search vector is not defined. So we actually have to bring this into the, to the view. So we're going to need to include this at the top. So that's going to be from the Django Postgres search. We're going to import the search vector. So if we go back now and try again, there we go. Okay. So we can improve upon this search even further by utilizing search query. So here the words are passed through a stemming algorithm. So this is the process, like it says here, reducing words to their stem or base. So in addition to that, search, we can search by logical combination of terms. So for example, if we typed in Django testing, and but we had a title of testing Django, then using logical combinations, the search would still find some results. In addition to that, we can also use search query to combine logically using the and or and not. And this, I guess, is a more advanced feature. So for example, if you wanted to create a search engine um, that had the ability to use advanced search uh, characters, for example, plus, you could use this combination to build uh, bigger queries. Okay, so let's have a look at utilizing search query within our code. Okay, so first of all, we just need to import it in search query. And then the only thing that we need to change here, because remember that, like I said, this is, if we go back, what it does, it passes through a stemming algorithm. So it looks for words and then tries to reduce them into their base. And then also it looks for a combination. So really it's only going to be working on, on the actual query the user types in. So where this is placed is right here in the filter. So we're going to say search equals search query queue. 
So you can start to see how this has become a little bit more co almost component based. We have the search vector here and we have the filter with the search query technology right here. Of course, if you've got lots of results that you're returning, then sometimes it makes sense to somehow rank them and return them in a more logical order that the user is more likely going to find useful. So what we can also do is create a, a ranking system or implement a ranking system, search rank. So let's have a look at how this works. So let's go ahead in the code at the top, we're just going to add the search rank. And what we need to do now is add a weighting. So we tend to add the weighting to the, the fields or I'm going to give you an example of adding the weights to the fields. So for example, in our example, we had two fields that we're searching against, the title and the body. Now it's probably be more likely that you want to make sure that the search is more predominant on the title rather than the body. So we give the title a, a higher weightage. So here we have the default settings of D, C, B and A. A has the highest weighting of one and D has the lowest. So what we're going to do is add the higher rating weighting, sorry, to the title and a lower weighting to the, the content of the post. So that way that the, the title always takes precedence in terms of if there's text that matches the title, then that's going to be weighted higher than if the text is just found within the content. We also have another feature that we can turn on called Covered Density. So here in this example, we're also going to enable the Covered Density. So by default, it's set to false. So when you set the Covered Density parameter to true, it's going to enable Covered Density Ranking, which means that the proximity of the matching query terms is taken into account. So let's think about now breaking this down into smaller components. Let's first of all define the vector and then the search vector title. We're going to give it the weight of A. Remember that that has the higher weighting. And then we will give a search vector content a weighting of B, so a lower weighting. And then we can set up the query. So again, we're going to be utilizing search query and all the features that that provides. And then we can go ahead and create our results. So again, it's the post objects annotate. And this time we have rank equals and then search rank. So here we have the vector and then the query. And then I've turned on the cover density. So cover density equals true by default, it's false. And then we order by the rank. So looking at my previous result, when I typed in Django, you can see that we had this learn view Django appearing first. So if I just refresh the page to refresh that search. You can now see what's happened is that it appears near the end. So we have a ranking system here. So for example, I've manually typed in Django Django many times into the title here. This post has one, two, three, four um, instances of Django at the start at least, and this has three. So you can see potentially how it is now starting to rank your returns. Obviously, this isn't the best um, example because I don't have many results, but you can start to see the, the logical process here and what the potential features that this is offering you as a, a better search facility. So in this tutorial, although it's very short, we've now introduced some of the Postgres features search vector, search query and search rank to produce more intelligent search results. And in actual fact, we could probably run with this and include it in a, a small blog application like this. It would probably serve us very well initially. So hopefully you appreciate we're slowly building this step by step. And again, first of all, we created the search feature. Then we added some Ajax and looked at drop down automated search. And now we've had a look at more advanced features that we can include. So that's definitely more 
that we can do for this search facility and we'll have a look at this in future tutorials.